There's no such thing as an entry-level job in cybersecurity. Jonathan, you had a story about uh, entry-level jobs and what, what skills you need for day one. Do you want to go into it? Yes, definitely. So, I, I, you know, we usually do kind of vulnerability stories and, and things that are being hacked. And I, and I thought for, you know, those watching us that might be interested in the field that might not be in it yet, um, I found this uh, blog post by Daniel Missler uh, about, you know, what kind of the expectations of a potential hiring manager will be on day one, right? Like, how, how do you get, first of all, to day one <laughs> to get hired? And, and what are the things that they might be looking for? So, um, and this kind of ties to, we've done stories about that, what they're calling the skill gap in cybersecurity, mm -hmm. where like, you know, in, in 10 years, there'll be millions of jobs that are free for everybody to take. Um, and, uh, and, and I, in this, uh, this, person, I think he's a researcher, or at least he's a security person, but he has other articles about that very same thing, how there is this gap. So, um, and in this article particularly, he's kind of trying to detail, uh, um, one thing that I, at least I got from that is that there is really no entry level position in cybersecurity, that, that it's, that because cybersecurity itself is not a field, right? That it's, you, 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 there are a lot of other things you do within the cybersecurity world that, uh, and I think, you know, that's one of the things that if someone comes to me like, oh, I'm interested in cybersecurity, I'm like, well, what? Like, what is it that you're interested in? Because you, you could be doing any potential thing right. underneath that. And actually, I brought a, uh, there's the cybersecurity domain mapping that I found um, very interesting that kind of breaks down like every possible uh, job that you could end up in cybersecurity and, and is overwhelming, right? So someone in this entry level world comes in here and says, I want to do cybersecurity. The first thing you need to figure out is okay, on what? <laughs> this is interesting. I'm, just looking, I'm not on this list. Um, and, I don't uh, see any incident response. There is on the, on the bottom left, there is security operations and oh, there it is. Okay. incident response security investigations, yeah, forensics. Uh, you know, my teams, those awareness as on their user education, you know, internally we have governance and risk assessment, we have career right. development, we have security architecture, I mean, so that's one of the things that, I, that as a person in this entry level world, you need to figure out is, you're not doing cybersecurity, right? You're doing something within the field of cybersecurity. And uh, in, in this article particularly, he kind of goes into, um, uh, and I'll, I'll scroll to that, some scenarios that, that are, can be built and kind of some tasks that are expected, right? Um, and I, I'm gonna pick on one that is particularly, because I, I actually had to do it in, in my job, and I learned on the job, was uh, preparing for uh, an audit. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's favorite task. It's right, <laughs> but usually a junior entry-level person might end up in that team, right? Right. And they right. need to understand what it what it means to do that. And as a person hiring, that might be the thing that you want them to understand. You know, can you help during an audit? Right. And if they don't even know what that is, then you know you're immediately going to eliminate them, not thinking that maybe they do have skills they just never done an audit. And I think that's kind of what we get to in here that. It's not about the skill to do the audit, it's about the skills underneath that you might be able to bring them up to an audit level speed, right? Right, right. <laughs> and, uh, and then this one is very interesting because, you know, it, it's uh, things like understanding which kind of audit it is, right? Is there a SUC2 audit? Is there, you know, an application security audit? W what is the audit? So th that's one of the things that you might, you know, ask in an interview, like have you done X type of audit or just a security audit in general because there's many different types right um and and, and you know things like um uh, anyway this one was a good one and then just uh oh uh, we have let's say five different um places where we get blacklists from when you need to write an api for it so you know that might be simple programming but that programming requirement is still there right and and i thought that's what was interested in this is that you know it's the gap is between the people that are asking the questions and the people that are applying for the jobs. And, and we need to find a way to, to meet, you know, skills versus the job. Because you might be able to teach the job if those skills are there. And um, I always go back to this um, cybersecurity career path as a cyberseek.org. It's very good because of 
because what they, they emphasize on is that you can't be a cybersecurity person without this, what they're called feeder roles, right? So, you know, networking, so, some, some type of software development, or at least knowledge yeah. of understanding of that, systems engineering, you know, some risk analysis, some security intelligence. You know, these are things that are prerequisites to an entry level cybersecurity position. So, you, so saying that there are entry level positions is it's kind of misleading, I would say. Most people don't jump into cybersecurity as their first job. They're usually some other job in a related field like uh, software development or system administration or some networking type of thing that's not necessarily cybersecurity in itself, but you get some experience in these related fields and then you go into cybersecurity and apply the, that knowledge into that field. So it's kind of hard to jump in to cybersecurity right out of like college, so to speak. Usually there's some some other in-between job before you get to it. Because you need other things before you can even get to that Right, point. to be really good right. in whatever cybersecurity track right. you take. Right, right. Um, that's really, uh, you know, I never had this formulated in my mind, right. but just seeing what you put up there right. is really uh, interesting to me because I know myself and a lot of the people I've worked with you know, we had jobs either in networking yep. or so I was a developer for 10 yep. years before I ever did any of this. Yep. Um, system administration yep. is also another one. I don't really think they have it here, right. but having those skill sets and then pivoting yep. into security is a lot easier when you have like a lot of good fundamental knowledge of those areas. And those are the kinds of things I look for for people when they're coming in entry level, I want to know, all right, how much your networking background do you have? Yep. Do you understand how machines communicate with each other? Right. Have you ever run Wireshark? <laughs> have you ever reassembled a stream right. and figured out what was going on here? Um, what is your development background? Can you write simple scripts even uh, so that we can do some automation of tasks or some security level functions? Those are kinds of things that I, uh, like in an incident response right. role, look for people um, uh, when you know when we're interviewing people, right. so it's really interesting though that there's very few people who come right out of college yeah. and jump into right. um, cybersecurity. Right. Not to say it doesn't happen, um, but uh, having some other you know right. training ahead of time or working in the field yeah. in some other respect can really help you along to be a, like a superstar in security. Right. And, 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 yeah, and, and in this article, you can kind of tell you know. You can pick from the task and, and sort of understand like the kind of things that you could do on your own, right? So, you know, again, like you said, maybe knowing how to write small scripts. Like you don't have to be a software developer, but you should be able to, you know, do Python or, or, or Go and like be able to type something right. to automate a Take specific Take one set of data, task. massage it in a script yeah. to output some other report. Right. That's right. like a very typical um, incident response kind of Be able to thing. understand, you know, protocols in general. You know, you know what DNS is, you know, right. what, you know, things, just simple things that maybe they're not emphasizing in some programs, but that when someone is interviewing and looking for this talent, they might not understand it that well. Um, I was telling uh, Matt Kaiser, he's usually on the show, that you know when I'm interviewing for software development, uh, you know the first thing I ask is, do you know what cross-site scripting is? And if the answer is no, then we have a yeah, problem. It's not right. <laughs> They're not coding with security in mind. Uh, right. So I will give him the, you know, I, I will tell him what it is and tell him that that's something that you should learn next time you go to an interview. Um, but to me. I need them to already understand what it is before you are even in the you know ballpark to be given a position, right? Right, so, right. Um, and in this case with cybersecurity, um, you know, you just had to find. And, and if you go to the, the Daniel Missler site, he actually has a you know a, a blog article about how to actually do this. So he walks through it, and, and it was very cool. And you can kind of pick things and how to become you know from being a regular person all the way to becoming a security professional, and it's a very interesting article. Uh, but in general, I think, uh, you know, we just, the skill gap is there because I don't think we're letting people understand that what the entry level is, right? Right. I think, right. Well, I guess that's my opinion on it, at least. Um, you have any thoughts on it, Tony? I, I think you're a hiring manager, I believe. So. Oh, yeah. It, I, and everything that was said, you know, what, what you said, what John said, makes a lot of sense. Is someone coming to 
um, a company wanting to get into cybersecurity, I, you need a background in something. Right. Um, I feel that way. I, you can't just come in and say, you know, try me. Uh, <laughs> you got to do some sort of development work or come from a different function within IT. Uh, John was talking about being uh, a developer, and he did it for 10 years. Yeah. The, the stuff that John works on is very very heavy in that, and it's, it's excellent for incident response. I came from the administration side. So yeah. I came from one, one vertical. You know, John came from another, but we were able to shift into the security realm based on our, our core foundation, our knowledge, and then start to evolve that into looking at security. You know, I went from making sure that servers were up and down to how do I harden them? How do I make sure that security controls on it work like antivirus and you know vice versa john with 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 networking how how does the whole network function how does dns function and then pivot into how to secure it how to use your knowledge with those those verticals and go into a security environment and and use those to do cybersecurity work so it, you're right with this the entry level it, you need other experience and some information within cybersecurity to make make it effective. And I, you know, I think it's just going to take time for that idea to actually be ingrained into when people are hiring for someone that's doing cybersecurity because it's cybersecurity for what? Is it audits? <laughs> right. Is it hardening? Is it a security control? You know, there's so many different flavors. Yeah, and, and one thing in a, in a footnote in the article that I was looking at was that, you know, in, in his explanation of, the, of why there's a skill gap, he mentions that th there are some positions that you could get, right? So, uh, and I, I was looking it up right after I read this, something like a SUC analyst. Mm -hmm. um, that is something that gives you a preview of everything that could be happening. Right. And, and you might not need to have that much experience. And um, a lot of times we'll draw from our SOC analyst yeah. team to bring them into incident response or some other type right. of function, you know, like our socks are more tier one, right. kind of like seeing the stuff coming in and then trying to pitch it off to whoever can take care of it. But some of those guys, when they really step up, yeah. they're like, oh, this guy's pretty good, or right. this girl's pretty good. Let's bring them in, you know, uh, right. to the next level here. Yeah, and, and it's and it's so so it's for those that are already, you know, they have a master's and their certificates. That, that there are positions that you could look into, but unfortunately. There is still, you know, that thing of it's not just entry level, right? right. So sometimes you got to pay your dues in yeah. another related field <laughs> right. for a few yeah. years in order to gain some experience right. that you can apply right. to cybersecurity. Yeah. Depending on how you want to, you know, proceed with your career, you need to figure out. Okay, it is cybersecurity, but what about cybersecurity? And I think that's what a lot of people leave out when they're trying to search for a job in cybersecurity is that. You know, that's not it. There's more to it. And that's what's led us to this skill gap of people applying for jobs and, and hiring managers saying, well, you don't meet our qualifications. So I think, you know, as an industry, we, we should try to figure out a, a better way to, to connect the two.